Ah, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you're at today. Let's try this for the third time. I keep on getting interrupted. Um, I think I got a video for you today. Got a little Cessna 150 here uh, with a O200, and we're going to be putting some magnetos on it. They're just freshly uh, 500 hour inspection from Magneto Aircraft Service in Montana. I believe that's what they're called. Uh, Aircraft Magneto Service, yeah. In Stevensville, Montana. They do a very exceptional job on putting these together. Uh, they look like brand new magnetos when they come back. They go through them really well. Make sure that they're all uh, good and ready to go. And I'm not sponsored. I'm just giving them a shout out because they do a fantastic job. Like I say, they look like a brand new magneto. Um, so anyway, a little bit about this airplane. Customer for a while. It's a little Cessna 150. O200 has a brand new engine. Basically was brand new. Uh, about three years ago from uh, Continental. Maybe four. Uh, he got it and he flies it a lot. It already has 1,200 hours on it. So it's already passed halfway on TBO. Uh, anyway, but it's a good running airplane, but he's very strict about doing the magnetos because he's had a magneto failure in flight after a 500 hour or before the 500 hour. Yeah, kind of run it out and and uh, it's important that you keep the magnetos uh, running properly because that's the heart of the engine that provides the spark. Uh, you can run out of fuel, put more fuel in it, and keep on going, but if the magneto goes out, uh, you're kind of stuck wherever you're at. <clears throat> so, let's get to it, and I'll show you uh, a little more detailed on how to put these on and how I do it. So, it's uh, it's quite fascinating, and it's it's pretty satisfying when it, when you're done, because then you get to run the airplane up and see how it runs. Anyway... Let me switch it around and uh, I'll show you what's going on. Okay, so here we go, O200. We got the spark plugs out. We got it on top dead center of number one. And what we did to do that is we pulled it through on number one, covering the spark plug hole here. And then there's alignment marks down below that we have our little timing uh, dealy do here that's magnetized it's stuck to the crank flange on 28 degrees with the split of the case except on the bottom and then what we're going to do here is we're going to start with this magneto see how they're so nice and pretty and they got torque seal on them and nice new data plate it comes with a sheet of everything that they replaced everything that they did already cleaned the flange got a new gasket on there i have my hardware on standby and i have my little buzz box uh right here to um time it in so the first thing after you get it up to top dead center you're gonna take the little cap off on the inside and if you look in there you see a red tooth that red tooth you want to put to the center of the hole so right about there and that's how the magneto gets inserted they do make a little tool that you screw into here and it holds the tooth um, but the problem is is that's a nylon tool or gear inside and if you forget that and you twist it it'll break that so i was always taught to just eyeball it in the center and it gets it nice and close and then you use the buzz box uh, to dial it in to get it spot on so I'm gonna put you in the holder here and uh, I don't know if I'll be able to show you um, right here we'll see what we can do without stopping it I'll get it to the top let me flip it over Press on the bottom. There. Let me come around to this side. I'll put the holder over here. 
so you can see. That's about right there. It's not going to be the best, but I'll talk my way through it here. So I got a half inch, quarter inch drive ratchet, quarter inch drive ratchet with a half inch socket. I have my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I got that mark right in the center. I'm going to come up through here in the back, trying not to twist the gear or bang it on anything to put it out of timing. And this is where it can get a little tricky sometimes. See, I already did that, so you got to <clears throat> move it over. And with these Bendix mags, they have slots in the ears, so you have to get those just in the right spot on the gear. Just like that. Well, it looked like it moved on me. Because if you get it over too far one way, <clears throat> then you can't uh, get it timed because it'll bottom out on one end. Oh, there we go, right there. That's perfect. Okay, so then what I do is you have a flat washer and a lock washer. So there's a, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of blocked. You might be able to see the top one, but it's a flat washer that's fairly thick. It's not like a regular uh, AN 960 washer or a 970. <clears throat> 970 is the large area washer, um, but this one's actually a little thicker. It's a special washer, I'd say. And then it's just a typical um, split washer, lock washer. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but it's definitely a little bit thicker washer than normal. Let's see if I can do this from here. Now the nut has kind of like a, a rounded flat spot on the bottom of the regular nut and you want to put that side down that's the flat side that goes against there so you just want those fingers tight right right now and uh, I got one my grounding um, terminal on the bolt that goes to the starter for my buzz box and then I'm gonna put the red terminal on the P-lead, and I'm gonna turn my box on. So the light's out, and what we wanna do is we wanna turn this either way. Whoop, there goes the light, so it turned it on. So with this box, when the light goes out, that's when the points just start to open. So I'm gonna very carefully twist the magneto Counterclockwise, there it goes. You can hear it. I'm going to twist it back clockwise so it comes back on. <clears throat> and then I very want, very carefully want to move it right there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wrench, my quarter inch drive, half inch socket, and I'm going to take and I'm going to tighten the top nut first. I've learned over the years, for some reason, tightening the top one has an effect on how it times. If you tighten the bottom first and then tighten the top, it'll be off. Because sometimes the Magne magneto will move just very slightly so I'm not tightening them super tight but just tighten enough that the magneto won't move on me okay then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the prop um, 
backwards so the light goes out. And then I'm going to tap the prop on the trailing edge to go in the correct way of rotation, which if you're sitting in the pilot seat, it's going clockwise until that light goes out right there. And then what I'm going to do is walk in front and I'm going to look at my little, I need my flashlight. I'm going to look at the split of the case and my little magnetic thing on there. And it's not quite where I want it. So it's a little over. So let's do that again. And you always want to turn it farther than you want. You don't want to just do that little bit here and there. Okay, so now I'm right at the split of the case. So it's not beeping at me. Sometimes it takes a, a couple tries. Sometimes you get lucky and you get it at the first time. So you loosen everything. I loosen the bottom first and then I loosen the top and I don't loosen it as much as I had it before. I want to try to move it being a little tighter because that way it won't move so much when I tighten it. It takes a little bit more effort. There. That's right on the edge there. might have been too much okay I'm gonna tighten the top first again I like using quarter inch drive stuff on these because then you can't tighten them too tight if you over torque them you can break the ears of the magneto and you don't want to do that Okay, so now we're going to back off on the prop. And I usually go about maybe two, three inches. Maybe not that much. Just so it takes the slack out of the gears. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to rotate it in the correct way of rotation until I hear that buzz or beep right there. And then that one's dead on. So let me bring the camera around. Or my phone actually. Do do do. Okay. So I'll let you see the box. And I'm gonna back off on the prop. You see both lights are on right now. And then I'm going to gently tap the trailing edge of the prop in the direct rota lo rotation until the light goes off. And then I'm going to look right here with my mirror. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but that mark is right on the split of the case and it's on 28 degrees now 28 degrees if you look at the cylinders he has all millennium cylinders on there so 28 degrees is is legal if he had the old continentals they would be uh, uh, 24 degrees I think and we'll turn that off and if you look inside Right here, you can see the mark of the tooth right in the center. Okay, so then what I do, I'll take this plug, 
make sure you put that back on there so you don't get any dust debris oil junk inside there like that and it only takes a tiny bit of torque you use a small screwdriver and just snug it it doesn't have to be super tight then what we're going to do just to verify i'm going to put my socket on there i'm just going to give it a little ugga dugga a little ugga dugga and there you go so all we have to do now is uh i'm going to leave this connected for now um so what we would do next let me see if i can get in there without shaking too much um so here's our p lead i don't want it over there so we're going to hook our p lead up first and then we'll put the cap on we don't want to put the cap on if it was connected to the spark plugs which they're not now so it doesn't make a difference but if we had the spark plugs all connected you'd want to do the p lead first and that safeties the uh, magneto and then you put the cap on and these only go on one way if you look at the end of the cap it's narrower between here than it is up here and so they only fit on this magneto one way so that way you get the right orientation for the spark plugs going to the correct cylinder. And if you're doing a new harness, if you look on this particular harness here, there's a little tag on there that says 4B. I don't know if you can see that, 4B. This one is 2B. 2B or 4B? That is the question. And then you have one with 2T and two or 4T. Um, not 40, 4T, Tango. So that's the top and the bottom. And there's usually two from one magneto that go to the top, two that go to the bottom, and the other magneto does the other side, whichever isn't done. So that's it. Pretty easy peasy. Um, and then, of course, at the end of all this, you'd want to take and... Let me switch back over here. And of course I stopped the video instead of switch. Um, so anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, of course, when you get done with all this, we would run it up. Uh, check the magnetos. Make sure that they have the right um, drop on each side. And it's good to go. Alright, cheers. Cheers.